Yep. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome here in the space and out there in Zimland. Um, I'm Jody Johnson, and I'm here to welcome you to the conversations in STEAM with the United Nations Specialized Agency, International Telecommunications, IT. And the subject we're talking about is the evolving role of STEAM in advancing female leadership in technology and innovation. It's gonna be a really amazing conversation. Uh, we have um, we have something here to talk about voice of change. There's gonna be a conversation between Ursula Van Hoven and Nasila Phillips, who is a student talking about, you know, what it's like to be in STEAM and technology. Oh, the different avenues that they have. But first, because we get going, I'm going to introduce you to Sinhirantu Malin, the founder and executive director of Aspire Artemis Foundation. So tell us a little bit more about what it is that Aspire Artemis is all about. Sure. Thank you so much, Jody. Uh, such a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. to, um, thank you so much for uh, having us here today. And uh, for those of you joining us here, um, it's a wonderful time of the year to bring people together. Um, the week before Thanksgiving, tell and share our stories. Um, so today we're 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 just having normal conversations as we would at coffee tables or our dinner tables. Um, and we have some wonderful people here to talk to the students about pathways in the technology field. So we hope that you will love the event that we put on today. Um, and I will read from a prepared speech as well. So <laughs> <laughs> um, so education, it, um, it stands as the cornerstone of societies constructing knowledge, fostering understanding and linking diverse worlds to a future where we become the architects of our destinies. Storytelling, equally influential, not only disseminates culture, uh, ideas, and experiences, but it also forges connections among us, stitching together a tapestry of shared humanity. Our experiences, whether triumphant or challenging, humanize us and hold the potential to inspire others on their journeys. Within the framework of Aspire Artemis um, Conversations in STEAM, along with the ITU through a collective action approach, um, these discussions will serve as threads of inspiration, weaving a narrative intended to imbue us with the wisdom needed to emerge as leaders in our respective fields. And I'm sorry because Today, uh, technology, we're here to talk about technology and innovation, but I'm not sure which direction the camera is in because we're having some technical difficulties. So bear with me if you're not seeing me directly um, if you're on the Zoom um, connection. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna tell you, we're, we're here to tell stories and share stories. So I'll tell you a bit more about myself. So my roots trace back to a small Caribbean island where dreams were turned into reality, leaving behind pebbles of inspiration. From Nobel laureates in economics and literature to custodians of culture and world heritage, my ancestral legacy is one of hard work, success, and a commitment to community well-being. Pioneers fill my family history, achieving numerous firsts. The first real estate person who happened to be a woman, the first female minister, the first female politician, and many more. My maternal grandparents worked as teachers, politicians, business people, catechists, and interpreters, all while imparting the value of acquiring the best education possible to their children. Operating with this ethos, I function in society with a collective action mindset. With that said, not enough women and youth are at the forefront of decision-making in the arenas that significantly impact them. Success becomes elusive when voices remain unheard. Young men from an early age are often discouraged from advocating for women's rights, perpetuating notions of strength and dominance. Yet, history proves that the most successful men are those who champion the rights of women. Robust public education campaigns focusing on past successes and achievements can kindle inspiration and encourage more individuals to play an active role. 
At the end of the day, people genuinely want to, su to succeed and to support success. While women are often associated with leadership in fields deemed women's issues or women's work, an increasing number excel in traditionally male-dominated careers. Progress has been made. But achieving a 50-50 gender balance remains an ambitious goal. Stakeholders and governments, member states, businesses, civil society, regional organizations, and the private sector are making commitments towards gender equality, aiming for a planet 50-50 by 2030. Women now head tech companies, banks, international organizations, colleges, including Medgar Evers College and more. Harnessing the knowledge and expertise these women provide is timely and crucial and incredibly inspiring to put future leaders on a path to success. On a fundamental level, one of the keys to individual success often lies in having a mentor, someone genuinely focused on advising without preconditions. Mentors, they connect us and advise us in ways we may not have imagined on our own. Yet many youth in underserved communities lack access to these opportunities. By providing students with positive and inspirational stories from mentors and change makers, Aspire Artemis essentially seeks to provide chances for young people, especially those in underserved communities. Today, as we share our stories and experiences through this conversation in STEAM, my hope is that we connect, that we exchange insights, and that we give back to the young people in the audience embarking on journeys that demand mentors, supporters, and inspiration. Thank you very much. Thank you, Zamina. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna ask um, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna talk about the voices of change, which is we're gonna have a change maker and a visionary who's gonna speak briefly about what it is that they do and what it is that what is their role within tech. And so with that, I would like to invite Anusha Vandapani to the chair. Uh, she is the Chief Data Analytics Services Officer at the UNICC. So come up here. So okay. I'm gonna move away so you can have the whole entire floor to yourself. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Uh, um, no, this, yeah. There's two chairs. You can stop that, Jody. Okay. 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 Sure. Um, so you just um, give your your words of inspiration and uh, okay, just, uh, okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Anusha Dandapani. Um, this is my first um, sort of session where I'm here to talk about um, my experience or part of my story, perhaps that I can share with all of you. Hopefully, it's inspiring. Hopefully, it's uh, giving you a perspective, perhaps that you haven't had before. So um, my career, I started my career as a computer science um, technology uh, focused person. And uh, perhaps when I started uh, as a computer science engineer in a class of about 60 in my class, um, there were, I would say 25% were women um, and the rest were men. Um, and the reason why I chose computer science as my major is because uh, growing up, I was very good at math. And I did believe that, you know, uh, putting my math and the science skills to good use, um, instead of choosing traditional pathways, such as like, you know, art or non-science career, um, I think it's, it was like an organic for me to choose uh, a career path um, in computer science, yeah. 
Um, and uh, my first job, uh, I landed a first job in my campus placement, uh, and it definitely helped me kind of get into this professional world of being a software programmer and trying to understand how you can solve problems using the skill that you have. Um, and I do believe that when you get into the professional world, it's very difficult as a woman um, and a woman in tech because uh, a team, again, a team that I worked for, uh, perhaps there were a team of uh, 20 people uh, focusing on one specific focus uh, project that I was working on. And we had about only four women in the team. I'm glad at least I had yeah. three other women who were there around. Uh, mm -hmm. um, but what I do see is that, like, you know, um, I had the opportunity to uh, leave my home country, India, and I moved to Caribbean. I lived and worked in the Bahamas uh, for some time. Um, and that was my first journey towards. Uh, uh, my uh, career towards the investment banking. So I joined the investment bank and I was working as a, a trading platform programmer and I was very much focused on security and derivatives. And when I moved uh, to the Caribbean or to the Bahamas, uh, to the uh, technology team in the banks uh, in the Bahamas, I was the only woman in the team. The rest were more or less everybody uh, of uh, different kind of diverse uh, background, but still uh, I was the only woman in the team. Um, and there was also instances where like, you know, um, if you are part of the IT department, uh, people don't uh, sort of assume, they, they do assume certain things that it comes as a bias uh, when it comes to a professional world, right? Like, you know, so I was a uh, part of this team and the, uh, I was working with the front office traders in the investment bank. Um, there was an instance where in one of the traders would walk past by my desk and come to me to say that, hey, my printer stopped working. Can you come and fix my printer? Um, and it, it was a sort of a, also an enlightening moment and also a moment where you feel that like, you know, uh, the other person, perhaps it's a genuine question, you know, uh, it's not uh, it's not because you're a woman or it's not because you are a uh, technologist who are sitting there in the IT department, because I really don't know how to fix a printer. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a software programmer, I'm a computer engineer. Um, so uh, I, was, uh, I was a little bit thoughtful. Uh, what I did is that I put, pulled out a sticky note and I gave the 1-800 number uh, to the trader to call this number, perhaps they can help uh, how to fix. Uh, and uh, you know those kind of stereotypes, uh, you will end up uh, sort of running uh, into these sort of stereotype and then the sort of uh, the way of how you are being uh, sort of perceived in a technology space or in a technology industry, um, it comes because um, we still have a long way to go as women uh, for us to establish ourselves as equals um, and also uh, to make sure that we are not only creating space for ourselves, uh, we are also creating space for the new generation to come. Uh, and uh, how can we create space for the new generation is by leading by example and making sure that, uh, as Hermina mentioned, uh, serving as mentors and also giving the next generation a chance uh, for them to not only to work with you, but also give them a chance to uh, identify pathways wherein like you can uh, not only give the experience to the young students and the young women and the young uh, talent, but also to give them the opportunity to see the space differently because the, what we had to go through, we don't want you to go through. Uh, that, that is the uh, space that we want to create for the younger generation, yeah? Uh, happy to answer any questions. Uh, hello again. So now, thank you for that, Anusha, for your wonderful conversation. I really appreciate it. It was very informative. And I'm sure the students got a lot from it. Um, I would like to invite, we're going to have our conversation in STEAM, and the theme is 
the evolving role of STEAM in advancing female leadership and technology and innovation. This will be a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Ursula Winoven, Esquire, who is the IT representative to the United Nations, along with a Mecca Everest College student, senior, who is a major in computer information systems and a minor in finance, Ms. Sheila Phillips. They're going to have a really wonderful conversation between the two of them. And yeah, I'm going to give you guys the cheers. That's what we get on is the compliments. <laughs> Keep them coming. Yeah. <laughs> Can I start by asking you how you normally introduce yourself? Let's just dive right in. Sure. So my name is Nathia Phillip. I am a Trinidadian descent. I am a passionate, tech savvy female in a male dominated field. Um, I'm a mom. I'm a funeral director. I'm that person that you go to when you need things solved. I'm that person that you come to when you need someone. And I'm that person who is everybody's person. <laughs> Lovely. Woo <-hoo. laughs> well, it's a real, it's a real pleasure to be having this conversation with you. Um, as we've mentioned, my name is Ursula Weinhoven, and I work for a UN entity called the International Telecommunication Union, um, at ITU for short. Uh, we're actually the oldest UN entity. Uh, can anyone guess what the T stood for back in 1865 when we started? What would have been the technology of the day? Telephone. No, nope. before uh, telephone. Train? Yes. Telegraph. Very good. <laughs> See, we're actually the oldest one from 1865. Yeah. yeah. Um, so neither of us actually went into tech right away, though, even though we both work in tech now or are both in tech now. Um, what was your path into tech? Indeed, my journey into tech was a bit unconventional, Ursula. Um, I started off in funeral services, um, also in telecommunications, working for the city of New York um, under the advisory of the mayor of New York. And I came into tech uh, now uh, because I wanted to actually find a data-driven uh, source for funeral services which is a pretty prehistoric industry that we need all the time, but uh, tech is not one of the forefronts of that. So that's what we into tech. What about you, Ursula? <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's been a yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, among other things, right, it's the opportunity for innovation that tech can, can be a tool to, to help with that, isn't it? It is. Um, advanced tech, a lot of people uh, post-COVID, you know, we lost a lot of people and a lot of people got a first hand to see what it is to lose a loved one. And I think that that's where tech came in. I'll let you guys know the embalming process is uh, luck and chance. And I have actually written a code um, for you to actually try and get the embalming process to be perfect based on the condition of the body, the age and stuff. So the way that your family or your loved one looks uh, when they decease, then you do the embalming or at the time of that is really based on so many mitigating factors that it's almost impossible for you to get your family member to look as you would want to remember them or as you know them to be. So uh, that drove me crazy because this uh, drove people um, from grief um, to sadness, to just not coming back. So that brought me into tech. So I was like, there must be a right way to do this. There must be a solution to it. So I turned to computer science, which was my initial major, and I started developing code uh, for reconstructive. If you love one got into a car accident and their face was damaged, there was no air, there was no nose, we could do that. But what if they lost the entire face? No eyes, no nose, no mouth. And we had like one picture. How would we do that? AI. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, today is Chad GPT's birthday, and um, we have the possibility to write code. <laughs> we have the possibility to do reconstructive, and it's possible now for that to be, to do it. So, you tell me about the United Nations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, similarly, I didn't go into tech right away. If someone had told me uh, even ten years ago that I'd be in technology, I I might not have I believed them. But I think it's really a key thing to think about in one's career that you. You don't necessarily know which path you're going to take or where it's going to lead you and that's totally fine i think sometimes when you look at like a bio of a person it seems like such a logical path but the reality is mm -hmm. as it's lived it's often really different than that i think that's helpful to bear in mind so similarly like i i didn't go into tech right away um i started actually in human rights 
um, in the government. And I really wanted to, I was very interested in the international level. So I did some more studies to help sort of transition to the international level. And um, it, it, it can be hard to get into the UN. I know we're going to talk about that a little later. Sometimes persistence is, is really, really key and building a network the same kind of tools you use in a lot of other settings. But I started in um, sustainability, corporate sustainability, and I was there for 14 years and I worked for an initiative called the UN Global Compact. And that was really interesting looking at how companies, um, what they should do to respect human rights, um, labor rights, the environment, and avoid, avoid corruption. And of course, one of the sectors which has been growing a lot and where there's a lot of risks and, and challenges, but also huge opportunities is the tech sector. So at, at some point, an opportunity came up to, um, to move into the role that I'm at now, which is to represent this uh, very old, the oldest UN entity working on the newest technologies. Um, they're based in Geneva, and I look after the office in New York. And what Ursula fails to mention is that she's the first female to hold this position. Well, I'm only also the second person, so it's not as amazing <laughs> as it is now. It's amazing. <laughs> I think Ursula and I both know what it is to enter a male-dominated field, um, which is the tech industry. We uh, have a lot of females I know um, that actually start off wanting to pursue tech at grade level. Uh, they actually change their mind. We barely see any uh, females uh, who actually follow all the through all the way through to college, bachelor's, master's degree in tech. Some may alone to get the line; they get uh, diverted. Um, so Ursula and I, it might be the second of the two times the position has been held, but for us females in this industry, it is an amazing, amazing um, feat yeah. that you have done. So, you know, give Ursula a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually um, why we're here today. Well, my honor today is to be also interviewing you. And so in that context, could you share um, why, why should folks move into tech? Because there are clearly different paths into tech and it doesn't have to be right away. Mm -hmm. But um, why should people move into tech in your view? So I think tech is within everyone. Um, Aspire Foundation, they are really focusing on STEAM. And I think within every individual, there is science, technology, uh, all the aspects of STEAM with you, you know, um, it's there. It's how you bring it out. So my passion is computer information uh, systems. I love to make technology, make my life so much easier and run my home, but I use art. So I am a victim of rape. I'm a rape survivor. I am also a victim of child abuse and molestation. And um, I've, yeah, everybody knows I was at one point homeless. Uh, I had to, was a single mom raising my mom, my, raising my daughter um, in New York. And I was an immigrant here. Uh, undocumented. So I've had a long struggle. But art, uh, poetry has been my release. Uh, poetry is my uh, my art in the scene. So I find that I write poetry and I release, I write poetry and I translate myself and my emotions and what I want to do. Um, I use tech um, to solve my problems, right? Mm -hmm. That's where my science comes in. I say, listen, this problem cannot be the end all of everything. I'm going to take this and I'm going to make it work for me. And I spin it around. So that's my science and my technology. And I do have a lot of energy. Everybody knows that. And my math comes in because it's a lot of figuring out. So I think that um, everyone is pursuing some form of steam. Everyone probably is not being acknowledged for the for what they are doing in steam. You know, the paperclip was one shot the paperclip. And it's... Uh, it's a driving force in the stock market. Um, so I think people just need to really value themselves. People need to trust in their ideas and they need to try. That's it. They just need to try because everything you try at is going to really fl flourish into something. So the path into steam is what? Just get into it. Take your passion uh, and get into it. That, yeah. so, yeah. Ursula is a lawyer, right? So mm -hmm. You tell me what motivates you um, or what moved you into that. Uh, I think one of the things that's super exciting, and you've, you've talked about this already quite a bit, which is the, the power of using technology to help solve problems. Whether they're local challenges or global challenges, tech can be a tool that we as humans can use to make life better. Oh, yeah. And that is a really, really exciting thing. Um, and then also, as I mentioned, uh, it is such a quickly emerging area. So much is changing. There are new risks, challenges, and opportunities. And I think more than ever before, 
people with different backgrounds, different disciplines, different studies and paths are really needed in technology to identify those risks and challenges and the opportunities to use them to, to solve problems and, and to, to help make the world hopefully a better, a better place. Yeah, um, on that note, uh, we could definitely acknowledge, like I said before, today is the birthday of ChatGPT. Um, and we do we do want to celebrate that. And I only say that to say that um, tech has come a long way where people felt that, oh, I can't use a computer, but we have uh, my mom using an app, WhatsApp. So we have people really using tech in ways that are so much simpler and so much more diverse uh, across the board. So Ursula, um, I would say that I know that uh, with your long legacy that you hold, and your repertoire, I know that you have a lot. How do you balance uh, your career um, and your tech interests and your family? Mm, yeah, we talked about this in a way, like there's, it's a lot, we're juggling all the time. And it feels like particularly post COVID as well, if we are post COVID, we're juggling things even more outside work, work, studies, family, other responsibilities. Um, and I don't think I have any better answer than anyone else. So maybe we can get some good answers here. I'm learning from you. Um, but I think a key thing is also just trying to, um, when we are doing a whole lot of different stuff, making sure that we're also kind to ourselves, yes. so we give ourselves a break, that we take some deep breaths, we try and eat well and try and get some sleep and exercise and make sure that we ask for help when we need it as well. I do agree. Um, I do juggle a lot, uh, have a lot, wear a lot of hats. I think that one of my to go to is setting boundaries. And uh, keeping everyone involved. So there's a lot of people in my life, um, you know, from student government to school to family to work, um, to the two, three jobs that I work, to my internship. So I think keeping everybody involved and really presenting a realistic idea of what um, the expectations are of me, um, I think that does help. Because why I might be the person or everybody's person, um, I think I always have to remind people that this person needs some time. Mm -hmm. You know, I just need to switch off. And um, even if I don't do it, I do find that my daughter, who is very responsible and has been here through the entire struggle, she's that person to say, mom, enough is enough. You got to say no. So she'll take away the phone and turn off the lights. And I think that's what it is. When you have that support system that allows you to uh, maintain your boundaries, allows you to um, live up to your potential and allows you to be yourself. You know, you always find that crowd of people who you can like, oh my God, this is where you could find your comfort zone and this is that's your home, that's your true north. It helps you to push forward and do the million things that uh, Ursula and I do in, in the competitive environment. Mm -hmm. Now we were talking a little earlier and we heard Anusha also sharing her experience of the fact that tech sometimes is quite male dominated. And I wondered if, if you've encountered that and, and if so, how do you um, deal with that? So yeah, I, I've been lucky to jump into two male dominated fields. One, as a funeral director, I know that when I graduated, um, it was mostly males in that field. And because I'm Muslim, I was the only Muslim female funeral director. And uh, when I achieved my final uh, licensing uh, after setting the board in science, I would be one of two female Muslim funeral directors for the entire state of New York. Mm -hmm. And if you go to New York to New Jersey, I'd be one of three. Further out, New Jersey to Philadelphia, one of four. Mm -hmm. uh, so male dominated. Uh, this, that's my first, and now I'm in tech. And even right now, uh, with the graduating senior class, uh, we probably have a handful of female students who are pursuing that. How do I do that? I build a good, powerful bio of myself. Mm -hmm. I do what I advise everyone to do. I try. I came into funeral directing, and they said, oh, you're a female. You should be looking like this, doing like this. I bet you can't go take that body out of there. And I want to see you throw up in the morgue. And I want to see you in the cemetery. And I said, you know what? They're right. Because I saw all the, every, everyone else trying to fit in. I saw my other uh, female funeral directors wearing high heel shoes in the cemetery and sinking into holes and the short skirts. And I saw them, you know, so uncomfortable with the families. And I said, that's not me. I, I could only be me. So I had my lovely loafers in the cemetery. And I asked the guys to help me in the morgue. Could you please help me lift that body? Because, you know, and I did that. And what I could do, and I got, and what I could do, I did. And what I couldn't do, I asked for help. So in tech, I brought that with me. I wear comfortable shoes. <laughs> I ask for help. And I do what I can. And if I cannot do it, I make a plan for everyone else to come along with me. 
So I develop a team. So I'm in tech, I'm a funeral director, and I have a team. I have a team of everyone who has ever smelt me. Anyone who's ever read the same air with me, you are on my team. I tag you in. I don't need to know your name. I don't need to know where you come from. I tag you in. I compete with the men in this way because I build a profile. I let them know I am here and I will be seen and you are on my team. And I challenge that industry in the tech industry now. I'm at Conniston as an intern. Um, it's not male dominated. Uh, the tech field is, but I'm on a, a, a panel of mostly women. Uh, Conniston is one of those companies that I see the hierarchy of women in tech to be one of their three coming down and then one of the four. So every other um, director or manager is a female in tech. And it's wonderful to see that. And then at lower level, they have a lot of females because we have a lot of women in the workplace, right, Ursula? Mm -hmm. But we don't have a combination of women in the workplace. Mm -hmm. So um, that's it. Could you tell me, Ursula, how do you manage mm -hmm. in the United Nations in this male dominated industry? Yeah. Well, I mean, it varies across the UN. In a lot of ways, the UN is quite diverse, but it, it definitely the tech area is one of the more technical ones. And I think Anusha has the experience that she mentioned. Also, there are um, some parts of the UN which are um, more male dominated. And I think um, you really laid out a lot of fantastic tips there. And I think mm -hmm. among other things, just reminding yourself that, you know, you belong there and recognizing that just even by being there, you are just by showing up, changing that dynamic, right? Like in, in funeral directing by being one of the few, but you are an additional one of the few and you people see you and you do you and that is helping to make a change. And so you can feel great about that. And I think that's really important to, to it helps us feel more comfortable sometimes when we don't feel uncomfortable and recognizing that it's okay to feel uncomfortable and just pushing past that. And I had a great piece of advice, which is, if there's not um, a chair at the table for you, just grab a chair and pull it up. Yeah. <laughs> so on that note, Ursula, um, support is a key uh, issue uh, for women in tech, uh, for that driving course. Uh, where do you turn to support um, in this uh, in daily, in your day with the industry and with your continuation of your career? I think another great thing that we can do, particularly if there are uh, a, my, only a minority of women, is make linkages with the other women and support the other women. And even in group discussions, et cetera, I know there's a lot of research that says sometimes women get interrupted more. Um, they may not be given as much time to speak, but, but we can team up with other women as well and refer back to what the other woman said. I can say, well, like Anusha said, <laughs> like Nasia said, or I really like Nasia's point. And I think that's a way as well that we can help boost each other up. I agree. Um, I definitely feel that uh, us women in tech, we are so far and far between that I think that if I have to look for someone in my senior class, I have to look for um, a predecessor who graduated in 2023. So it's a little gap. So I think we should stick together. Um, I'm glad that Aspire Foundation is really bringing us together for this event, for us to be able to identify each other. I'm definitely taking it on this number. You know what I'm going to <laughs> And Ursula, you know, once you once I team up with you, you know, we're in it for life. So I think that that's one of the big things of women. Um, and I think that we, um, I'm gonna say we, all of us in this room, all of us at this event, it sh it should be one of our priorities to actually engage the up and coming generation. Um, I think they need to see us women at the forefront of the tech industry and where we are to know that um that's the path, right? Um, where I am at uh, as a senior, um, where Anusha is, where you are to see that, you know, the future or the present and to see how it's possible, right? Um, so I want to ask a question. This is our trick question that we spoke about earlier. Uh, does anybody in the audience um, want to name someone in tech that comes to you? Somebody that you know in tech? So, uh, Jeff Bezos. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? No? Yeah. Um, yeah. Summer. <laughs> 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 for that. Yeah, so is someone in tag. Um, so Ursula, uh, you didn't see that the first thing, uh, the first identifier of someone in tech is someone male, even though this conversation is about women in steam. It's just natural for everyone to remember Jeff, Be Jeff Be Bezos. But um, Ursula, do you want to mention someone? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the the organization I mentioned is the the oldest one in the UN, but um, and 150 years, 158 years have gone by, and we only ever had male leaders. 
And then um, at the end of last year, our 193 member states finally, for the first time, elected a woman. Yeah. She broke this glass ceiling and uh, her name is Doreen Bogdan Martin and she's probably the most qualified secretary general we've ever had. And I think, like what you said, um, one of the things I actually really admire about her is she brings people along with her mm -hmm. and she's really prioritizing uh, gender and youth. And she really wants to hear uh, um, people's ideas and advice no matter where they are in the organization. And I, I think these are real fantastic hallmarks of, of leadership. And I wondered who, who's someone in tech that you admire? Well, I would say Mira Moriarty. She is actually the CTO of OpenAI. For chat GPT. <laughs> yeah. And I only do that to say that um, we need to always investigate and look for our women. We have to look for a woman in support because she is not named out there, but she is uh, one of those founders um, relevant today. I mean, Jeff Bezos is a little bit, you know, in the past right now. You know, we have Nasia coming up, we have Selma, we have Ursula, you know, he's back here, you know? <laughs> so, I just want to get you guys to focus on what's coming up. You know, um, we have women emerging in the tech industry. We don't get our names for, right, mm -hmm. Um, We are there doing the work. We are there uh, providing the ideas and the innovation. Um, and we are there using the technology. So we really need to support our women in tech. And I say that um, if you see a, a male name associated with an invention, an app, look for the female behind it. You know, you know, that, you know that say, <laughs> if you see a, a powerful man, look for the woman behind him. Look for the woman in tech behind that innovation, okay? Look for that. Because her name is not being called, but we know she's there. <laughs> well, Hermine has been doing a fantastic job with Aspire mm -hmm. Artemis to help focus and put a spotlight on how do we get more women and girls and, and young people more generally into this field. But I wondered, what ideas do you have from, from what you've seen to, to get more women and girls into this space? I think we have to um, really allow our women to bring their self. I think that as a woman um, in the industry, as a woman in the business field, I think we're too often told how to conform, wear this, look like this, do this, don't do this, especially with all the different affirmative actions and everything that we have. We are always told what to do and what not to do. And I think that our women need to be told, bring yourself to your job. It's okay. Our girls need to be told that you can dream, you can use those ideas, and you can be innovative, you can be successful, right? You can wear loud colors, you know, I'm always sort of tone it down, you know, and you could, and it's okay. I think that that is where we need to start because the diversion of women pursuing a full tech degree or a full tech degree, um, a full tech career comes from um, lack of support, lack of confidence, and lack of ownership. Right. So we really want people to understand that you're as good as you give and what you give is good enough. And I feel that's what we need in the tech industry. And that's what um, the, the youth and I say women, but I also say the youth. Right. Mm -hmm. Because Artemis Foundation has also identified that youth in under uh, developed areas, um, they really do need the support. You know, I'm so tired of. Uh, applying for jobs and putting on surveys and when it gets to Medgevers College, they say other. We are not other. If you come to Brooklyn in the inner city, we are it. Medgevers College is it. So I'm so tired of seeing other. Um, I just say Artemis Foundation is on the right track. Our youth needs to feel empowered, right? This generation needs to feel empowered. We need to listen to them. I'm going to divert one second and say this. I was in an interview one time. The person told me that he's a recruiter of 16 years. And this is how we do it. And this is what we look for. And this is what I want to see. And what you have, we don't want it. And I said, really? I said, well, let me tell you this. This is how I do it. And this is how I want to do it. And if you don't like it, it's fine. I don't have to work for your company. Mm -hmm. And he said, I said, I went to school. I spent all these years at McGavis College. I have so many student loans. Today is my daughter's graduation, her prom, and I'm missing it. And let me tell you why I'm doing that. I'm doing it so I can do it my way. Yes. Technology tells me that I could turn my career and my dreams into what I want it to be. My mom used to toast bread in the oven. I have a fryer. I have a toaster oven. I can, I can do whatever I want. I'm not going to do it your way. Right? So this is what we need to tell our youth that what they bring to the table, because they are the next generation, we accept it, we will develop on it, we will guide them through it, and we will help them 
to, to make this a reality for us because we won't be here uh, using the orban anymore, right? We won't be here for that. We will be the ones having them do it. So let them let them do it. Let us support our youth. Let us support the next generation. Let us support our female. Let us allow people to bring themselves uh, to the job and let us allow them to, uh, to live their data-driven careers in the way that they see it. Let them dream and let them be innovative. Anantia, what is your next step? You've already done so much, but what, what are you setting your sights on? My sights are on success. My <laughs> sights are definitely um, to have a, a career where I am able to drive my own career. I definitely feel that I have worked hard enough to call my own hours. Mm -hmm. I definitely work hard if I want to work remote. I want to do that. And if I don't want to come into work, I don't want to do that. But I definitely work hard enough to finally exhibit myself. Anyone who knows knows I'm not on social media. It's very hard to get in contact with me. If you can't call me, I'm that in-person person. So I am at the point where I'm ready to reveal myself. You will see me in technology. Um, I will allow everyone to, to, to see what my dreams are. I'm going to bring that to fruition. So post-graduation, I'm actually writing a book. Ooh. Yep. And then I follow up with my career because I'm into continuous learning. Um, I finally finished my cybersecurity cyber certification as well as uh, entering into a graduate program. And uh, of course, I hope from all these lovely interviews that I'm having on these platforms, I land a very successful employer who's happy to have me and I'm happy to have them and we just fall in love and make lots of money together. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you do it all? Because, I mean, we talked about juggling before, but that's you. it's really at a whole next level. How, how, how do you get it all done? It's amazing. Hmm. <clears throat> I get it done by... Sleep enough? I, I don't, I, you know, I have two toddlers, one two and one three. My three-year-old has autism. I have an 18 year old who has earned all her badges. So she struggled with me through poverty. We've been homeless, we've been single. She's had to come to class with me. She's had to sit in a career. She's been in these four ways with me tutoring. Uh, and she watches me take on more and more, working two jobs, three jobs, from being a legal alien to being a citizen of the United States. Um, to still having time to mentor, to be on the PTA, um, to be student government president. She's seen me do that. How do I do it? I am cursed with ambition. <laughs> I am cursed. <laughs> I'm cursed with a desire to help people. I'm a, with a, a curse to living up to my potential. I once said to myself, if I, you know, one of the questions that I believe God is going to ask me in a day is, I gave you all these things. What have you done with it? And I have so many talents. I could draw, I write poetry. Um, I do a, I, I do a lot of stuff with my hands. You know, I'm that person who would take stuff and paint the walls and just do everything. And I don't want to, um, I want to give back. So I use all my talents, but how do I do it? I just try. The success is in the end, but I just really give it my all and I try. What about you, Ursula? How do you, um, <laughs> how do you manage your fantastic schedule? <laughs> I think you take the cake, but um, I just you just try and get it done. But I, I loved how you you brought it back to um, ambition and drive, and if you want to make a difference and you feel that you can help people, you can add value in some way, then it's really motivating. I think that's why we keep taking on things because we see opportunities to have an impact to make a difference. And that's why we take on additional things yeah. and why we maybe don't sleep as much as we should, but we no. have to sleep more. We have to take care of ourselves, right? We but, do. Yeah. And on that note, uh, Ursula, how do you maintain um, your mental health and keep that balance for your well-being um, with doing all this stuff? I know we love to do it, but we do know it takes a toll on us. So how do you maintain that? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's like an ongoing challenge of how to, you know, uh keep ourselves uh going i just i've been trying really hard to exercise and uh practicing deep breathing like if you get too much on your plate and you've got to you know uh calm down um try and eat well spend time with family and you find things that um give you joy and it may even be <laughs> more work <laughs> But you find that and uh you 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 know you can't you can't sprint a marathon right so right. you got to you got to keep yourself um, and be kind to yourself True. And, and treat yourself like think about the advice you would give to a good friend mm. and apply that advice to yourself. Mm. Treat ourselves kindly. I agree.
So what advice would you have for students? Um, you're coming to the end of your uh, student days, but like, what about students who are just starting out? Um, what should they look out for? Any tips, suggestions? Well, I'm going to tell them that everything that is a barrier, you will be faced with it. You will definitely be faced with no's. There will be not enough money. There will be not enough time. There will be a whole crowd of people telling you you can't do it. There'll be a whole lot of challenges that you will not be able to face. You may not get A's. You may not be the professor's favorite. You may not get an A, you know, you may not get it. And I'm just going to say that it doesn't matter. What matters is that you show up. You show up and you push the door open. You push the door open. Now, Medgar was, you know, <laughs> Leo Angeloni is in here. He knows I push the door open. I push the door open all the time. Uh, my I work from seven to three and they didn't have any classes. Uh, for me in the in the time that I was off in the afternoon. I said, really? No classes for me? I did this with my gamblers already. I signed a petition. Everybody, we want classes online. We want classes in the afternoon. Yeah, okay. And I push it through. That's what I do. I find out what the policy is and procedure. Always. Anywhere I go, I find out what is your policy, what is your procedure. I find out what are the rules and what are the instructions. And what I do is I start making my paths. I am a mother. I am a wife. I am somebody's daughter. And I will be successful. If there isn't a school to teach what I want, I bet you I will find one. Mm -hmm. If there is not a path, I create a path because I am here and I deserve to be here. So my advice is push the door open. Push kick the door. Down. Kick it down. <laughs> kick it down. You just kick it down because the door is you. The key to success, the key to anyone in this path, the key to the females is just to show up. Choose and decide that this is the career you want. Choose and decide that this is your passion because you have to be passionate about it because you won't survive the barriers, right? And once you've chosen that, just show up. You know, you're going to find a mentor. You're going to find somebody like me who was broke, illegal, single, single mother, you know, have no time. You're going to find somebody, you know, Ursula still managed to go to the gym. I can't even do that yet. I'm waiting until I graduate. But, you know, you're going to find somebody like you. You use that mentorship. You use your no's and you build your yeses, right? One thing I always tell people, someone tells me no, that's my guiding light. Because now I know not to go in this direction, but I know to go in this direction, right? So if someone tells me no, or that door is closed, no problem. I move in the next direction, but you keep moving. Fantastic. Fabulous. Fabulous advice. So Ursula, everyone is interested in the United Nations, such a big organization, such a dream to work with, Hinton. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. so tell us, how do you get into the United Nations? How do you do that? How do you, how do I kick down that door? Yeah, <laughs> well, I think one of the key things to bear in mind as well is that the UN is actually made up of lots of different organizations. There's about 50 or 60 of them. And so it's not just one monolith. And so um, a, a key thing to identify what opportunities there are, and there are internships, there are consultancies, there are young professional programs, as well as, as, as jobs of all different kinds of contracts. Um, there are some websites that are really good to look at. They have to, um, maybe like a lot of governments, they have to, for transparency purposes, post things. So um, sometimes, you know, I think in the private sector, you hear that there are the jobs that exist, but they're not advertised. But at the UN, they generally, for transparency purposes, have to put things on the website. So it's a great way to see what jobs there, there may be that are out there. Um, and there are websites like Impact Pool is one, um, UN Jobs is another one, UN Talent. Um, there, are, there are several. And there they will list all the kinds of things, including internships. There's even an organization in the UN called UN Volunteers, which is actually not, they get paid. It's not just volunteers. Um, it's also really worth checking out. And I think a lot of the advice you were giving before is really relevant, persistence. Sometimes the UN, you know, you can apply and you may not hear back, but you just keep being persistent. And as you said, it can be a lot of work, right? It's a, it may be something one has to do on Saturday nights, you know, keep, keep working at it, build your network, um, you know, take studies that are relevant to the field and, you know, keep working at it and 
you can find a way in. And I, I think anyone with your determination and the UN would be very, very lucky to have you. <laughs> so while we're giving advice, Ursula, and uh, what, what advice would you give to your younger self, seeing as you've uh, made that journey? Um, what would you tell your younger self if yeah. you had an opportunity? I think I would come back to the um, being kind to yourself and also the idea that don't try to be perfect. Um, try recognize that being that can be the enemy of the good. Um, and definitely, you know, I've always worked super, super hard, but uh, take care of yourself as well. Make sure that you try and sleep more and eat better and all those things because if you if you don't do that, you may it kind of can creep up on you. Um, and I do know some people who have like burnt out. And so we want to avoid that at all costs. Take care, take care of yourself, indeed work hard, um, and keep your eyes on the, the dream and just make it happen. I mean, it is good. And we do talk about burnt out. We do have it also the same thing in the college, you know, when you're in your senior year, when you're a freshman, you really do get to have so many arms pulling at you you know you want to be in clubs uh you want to be an aid student uh and you still want to fulfill your family um and your community attachments um so it is good I mean I would say ask for help um I know the college does have a lot of programs you know we have mentorships male development um we have uh, for single mothers we do offer daycare services we also have a lot of stress management we have mental health uh facilities here I would say that works a lot um, for you to really ask for help, but I really think that uh, you and I both know the, the best thing you can do is offer help, right? So offering help is something that we all need to do. Um, sometimes, you know, people come to school and, you know, you really hear that someone grumbling, um, you, they're really hungry. And, you know, it might be a shame to say that I'm hungry and I need help. They may not really want the handouts. So offering help is always good. You know, it's always good. I remember way back when my lights had gotten turned off and I was doing my daughter's homework by candlelight on the stove, um, not in permanent time, you know, to the, the 2000s. And so many people knew me and, you know, nobody offered anything and I wouldn't ask. And we were hungry. We were down to just drinking water from the pipe. And I had my Lucille Roberts membership. So many times I was looking fine. You know, I, I lost 60 pounds and I would walk to the gym every day, but we had nothing to eat. We literally bought like an $8 plate of food. My friend bought it and it would be... My who I call my sister at the time, um, Donna Noel would be her, Amani and my daughter and my other friend, and we all shared that. We made a, my daughter ate first. Um, they allowed me to eat after she ate, and then he ate, and we all ate that one eight dollar food, and that went on for a while. And one person saw me one day. He said, "Nasir, you want some lamb?" I was like, "Oh, sure." He said, "Go to the store and tell them, you know, get some groceries." And I never forgot that. And I just said, you know, the value in people, right? There's so many people who offer you things when you're good. You know, when they see you with groceries, you know, do you need help? You know, when they see you with a jacket, oh, you need a ride. But what about the people who, when you when you do have your car, do you need gas in that car? Do you do you need oil? Do you need me to pay that bill for you even though you have a job? I think that's the help that really matters, right? Offering. And when I got this opportunity, so you're going to speak to this with the Armistice Foundation. I didn't know much about it. And I went and I researched it. And... I want you to tell me, um, what do you think one of the key factors that the Amethyst Foundation is doing that helps women in tech or the youth in tech that we could relate to? Definitely bringing people together, right? I yeah. mean, the hats off to Hermina. Where is she? <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> oh, okay, there we go. She's still working. <laughs> um, bringing people together, right? Um, yeah. So I, I really am so appreciative that she brought us together. Yep. And this initiative is something that I I value so much at McEvers College. Like I said, we're always the other, and you have to you have to type in McEvers College. Um, <laughs> I had the opportunity to go to NABA, which is National Association of Black um, Accountants, and I was so sad. I went on over fifty interviews, you know, with big companies, right? Deloitte and B BDO and K big P KPMG and Crow and all of them. Each of them, I had to put other for McGavis College. And I had to type it in. I bet you when you come back and give me this interview in a couple of years, McGavis will not be other. But I just say that to say that the Armitage Foundation, Ursula and everyone who's here acknowledging 
Medgevers College, acknowledging the underdeveloped, the less privileged, the dregs, who are not the dregs, um, is a big issue, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a plus for us. We appreciate this at Medgevers College because we don't get opportunities. This is the first year that we have this Con Edison collaboration, and Con Edison is New York based. Right? Isn't that a shame that Con Edison is New York, Brooklyn based? And Con Edison has never ever partnered with Medgar Evers College. Mm -hmm. But Con Edison has partnerships outside. But now we're getting recognized. Mm -hmm. So this year, Con Edison has given us a, an internship. I am an intern with Con Edison. And I say that to say that I need United Nations, Amethyst <laughs> Foundation, keep your eyes on Medgar Evers College because we have so many people that have come out of here and went to Nassau, right? We have so many people that have, you may not have known that this is where they come from because we leave here and we get a graduate degree from Harvard, right? Or we go to Spelman after we leave here and you don't know that this is where we started, right? We originated at Medgar Evers. And one thing Medgar Evers College teach you how to do is how to fight, how to kick down doors, right? And you learn that here and we take it. So I want you guys to stay, keep your eyes on McGavis College because we need you to offer us. We need to offer us help because we need things like this initiative. We need a lot of funding, you know, because us women in tech, we don't get to show ourselves, right? We don't get to show what we can do, but we are the ones that they always ask, show me what you can do because you. I heard you got two babies at home. How, how, when are you going to come to work on time? You sure you can make it here? You know, I heard that, uh, I heard that, uh, um, I don't know, I get this a lot. I don't know if you do. They tell me, oh, you got two kids and you got to, oh, oh, you're going to need a lot of time off. I said, I probably will, but you know what I won't, what I won't do, I won't have somebody to do my job, right? So I always make my mark. I make sure I don't do my job. So I just say that to say, keep offering to my Gavis College because we have a lot to return. The students here are very deserving. They show up and, um, Ursula, keep giving that good advice. Fantastic. Um, does anyone have a, a question? Is it time for us to wrap up? Yeah, my question wrap up. Um, of course, we say, but if anyone, uh, yeah, if anyone in the audience have any questions, feel free to, to ask. If anyone in Zoom land, I don't know if you can, if you can hear me, feel free to unmute yourself and. Raise your hand if you have a question. Uh, yes, please raise your hand if they have a question, and we'll address you, and we'll. Um, have you asked any other questions? These two wonderful ladies here. Um, I know Zoom land is my family. Please do not embarrass me. <laughs> 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 Does Ms. Gillis' family have any questions for her? <laughs> There's a question. Oh, yeah, there. the question right over there. Yes. All right. Well, thank you both. Uh, this was very inspiring. And I love what you said about um, getting women and children involved. But, you know, something that always is in the back of my head is just, like, the immigrants. So, like, immigrants, especially, like, the, like, middle-aged ones who still have, like, a lot of time in the workforce so they don't get left behind. Do we have any input or ideas that we can, like, even offer, like, our own relatives? I, I think that no matter what age you are, there's, there's a role for you in tech. There's this there's space, it's growing all the time. So I, I think take the first step is what you said, right? Yeah, it is. Um, let me tell you a story, because I have a lot of these. Um, this is not my first time at my Gable College. I know about being an immigrant in the United States. I came here, I was undocumented. A friend told me, I got a way for you to go to school. I said, for real? Okay. I hopped on a plane, I came here, and no one was sponsored. I couldn't even get a visa. I had a friend who was in, um, he was in student government at the time, and we had assembled a team. It was my friend who invited me here. It was that person who was a partner and a couple of others, uh, other of us, we got together as a team. And um, they helped me enroll in McGavis College and get through the paperwork. And then the school called me and said, you need to pay. I said, oh, okay, I don't know how we're going to do that. <laughs> And a friend had a bright idea. He said, I know somebody, but I'm going to push it back. And I attended Medgevers College for a couple of years, uh, achieving almost my associate's degree at Medgevers College with never paying, and they kept pushing it back. I worked on the campaigns of politicians, heavy politicians, 
uh, Terrence Norman, James E. Boo. At that time, they had offices within McGavitt College. And I worked for them. I was that person who, when you woke up in the morning, you saw your sign on the door, I put it there. I was up at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. We call it littering up the street. So we would put posters on all the poles. We would put the letters in your mailbox. We would put the paper or the flyers there. And when you got up in the morning, you'd be like, who did this? And I did that, and they kept pushing me to school. So there came a time where Bursa said, because CUNY is not going to keep up with the nonsense. Mm -hmm. So CUNY okay. said, we're going to recall everything. And I said, oh. So my friend said, well, we can't do nothing, but we all got fired. <laughs> <laughs> so they said, Ms. Phillips, either you pay this amount of money, or you can't come to school no more. I couldn't come to school no more, because I was still an immigrant, right? And I lost my degree. I got married. I got my first set of papers. I said, I'm going back to school. I'm going to make Gavis College. I'm going to finish off my degree, and I'm going to get my credits back. When I came in, I said, Ms. Phil, we can see everything here. We can see all the grades that you got. We can see your credits that you got. You remember still your bachelor in computer information system. Why? But, but we can't give it to you, because we don't even know how much you owe. Mm -hmm. Right? They said, unfortunately, we cannot fulfill this because we don't even know where to start. So I lost all those credits. Yeah. And then I said, oh, okay, I got to start over. I said, no problem. I signed up a DeVry for biomedical engineering. And I did my first semester and I wowed the professors. And then they said to me, they say, you know, you, you can't get financial aid. You, you only have your temporary green card. I said, here we are. I said, okay, no problem. I said, I can't pay because I just got this paper and I have to support my family. And I dropped out of school. And then I got an epiphany that I love dead bodies and taking care of the deceased. And I started doing it for free. Call me if somebody died. You know, I said, I'm the person, call me. So they started calling me if somebody died. And when they called me, I would get up out of my bed and I'd go watch dead bodies and come back. And finally, somebody said, why, why don't you do this for a career? I would say, you get paid for this? I said, uh-uh, let me get on it. <laughs> And by this time, I had my permanent green card. I signed up for school. Long story short, as I said, I became a funeral director. I got, I got um, licensed, and I graduated with my associates in funeral services, mortuary science. And I said, I can't stop now because I'm on a roll. Because all I've ever heard, since I came in this country, all I've ever heard, no, you can't drink that juice. No, you can't sleep on my floor. We don't have no room for you. No, you cannot go to school. No, you cannot get a job because you don't have your papers. No, you can't do it. All I ever heard was no. So I said, well, if they say yes to me, let me keep it going because I don't know when they're going to say no. I signed up for school. I graduated in May of 2017. And I signed up for Medgarvis College as a newly enrolled freshman. Wow. Oh, in 2017, in the summer of 2017. And I started every semester. And in 2018, my husband said, we need to have a baby. My husband and I daughter collaborated, so we need to have a baby. So, wow, how do I do that? <laughs> how do I do that? So I said, okay, we want to have a baby, let's have a baby. And we started on the road to have a baby. And I couldn't have a baby because I needed to have IVF. I was on every dean's list. I was getting A's at everything. I was tutoring. I was mentoring. I was in every club. I had started founding the computer science club. I was on the ASW, which is the computer science club to help women in tech to become computer scientists, uh, computer scientists and mentoring them. I was on a roll. And these people who I love very much said, we are having a baby. And I started on the IVF treatment and I was dying. Calculus, I felt like I was seeing stars everywhere. I was throwing up. I couldn't show up to class. I couldn't kick down the door. I just couldn't do it. So I dropped out. So I dropped out. I had a miscarriage. I had my baby. I lost my nephew um, to street violence and I died. And then I got pregnant and I had my son and I signed up for my Gavis College. <laughs> I had my son in May of 2021 and I signed up for Mega Evans College uh, in the summer of 2021. <laughs> and as I signed up for Mega Evans College in uh, the August, uh, September of 2021, I never missed a semester. I've been on the dean's list and I've not been on the dean's list because I had to drop classes because I just couldn't do it. I had too much. I was doing eight classes because I had to finish, right? 
because I don't know when they're going to tell me no. I don't know when it's going to run out, right? So I was doing seven classes, eight classes. I was doing everything and working at the same time, working my two jobs, going to school, having babies, having a toddler, having a child at home with autism. And I, I'm also a foster parent, right? I foster to adopt. And um, long story short, you know, longer side. <laughs> and um, I'm a senior at my Gavis College. This is my final semester. I'm graduating. Um, I have a successful GPA of, what is it, 3.2, 3.3. Um, I'm on student government. I'm still a mom, right? I still had all those no's. And my advice to you and your family and anybody else, show up. Show up, right? My girl was told me, no, CUNY said you better pay the money. One day I could pay the money, right? But it's financial aid. And then somebody told me to take a loan, right? So I got to pay you back. But just show up. Because if that's not your door and that's not your time, it's not your door and it's not your time. Accept that. But it doesn't mean it's not for you, right? You have tomorrow and the next day and the next day. So once you can get up and show up, get up and show up. Because that's what we do as women, right? We don't get sick days. Somebody told me woman in tech. I said, I know what it is. I say, when they hear a woman in tech go for an interview, what they say, oh my God, she's going to need maternity leave. She's going to need sick leave. She's going to need all these leaves. A man in tech, all he needs to do is show up. They never think that a father in tech is going to take off from work to take care of his kids. Or he's going to take a sick day, right? But they know that's what it is. That's our call? No, that's, that's our framework. That's our framework. And that's why women in tech deserve to be in tech. We are the innovators. Because we have all the problems to solve on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So tell your family, listen, I know how we do. We can walk through the border from Mexico. We can walk through the desert. The longer your struggle is and the harder your struggle, the harder your struggle is, the more passionate your career is going to be, the more valuable you are to this industry. Because you're going to tell me in three years why being an immigrant doesn't matter when you have it up here and here to change everything in this world. Mira Moriarty, she's Albanian. Many people don't even know where Albania is. Mm -hmm. But everybody's using open AI. It doesn't matter who you are, we just show up, right? If you agree with me, I'm, I'm going to tell that. I'm leaving that story right there now because it wasn't short at all. <laughs> the session was phenomenal. It was inspirational, motivational, both of you. The question I have to ask you is, every time you were put down or something happened, you came back to Mecca. You could have gone to Baruch. You could have gone to Brooklyn College. You could have gone to York. You came back to Mecca. Tell them why. I finished what I start. And Mecca Evers is where I see myself. I see me in these hallways, right? I see people who are poor. I see people who are immigrants. I see people who are women. I see us with our children being allowed to come in class and the professor not saying, no, 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 kids in here. Mm -hmm. You know, I see us being able to throw up in the hallways and still go to class. I see us getting C's and B's and nursing and really huddling together and helping us. Medica Evers is where you get to be yourself. My daughter's going to college. She's going to city tech. And I really want her to come to Medgar, but she sees the difference, right? Medgar is home. I swear to God, Medgar is not a college, right? And I've had that formal training because I started up in law, right? We spoke about this. So I wanted to be a lawyer loving Perry Mason. So every episode of Perry Mason, I swear to God, I'm being a lawyer. In two years of law school, I said, I can't even tell them loud. I can't even. And if he tells me he did it, I'm telling everybody he did it. You know? <laughs> So um, Medgar Evers, I come back to Medgar Evers. I, I come back to Medgar Evers because I see myself. And I don't say that to say that if you're not Black, if you're not poor, you don't come to Medgar Evers. I say that to say that Medgar Evers embraces you and you find your place. Because many of us here who are Medgar Evers, we have the opportunity. Don't think that we couldn't go to Ivy League College. We could have. Because, you know, we, we have that capability. Because we leave here and go to Harvard and Spelman. And then, you know, they see us at NABA. And now they take my number, right? Because I'm the I'm on the call list for the 50, you know, the four, the big four. They interviewed me. Could you believe that? Little old me. Uh, from Mega Avatar. They interviewed me, the big four, right? 
I have Accenture calling me. I have all these uh, top name companies calling me on the phone and saying, Miss Philip, are you going to come to this session today? Right? So now I'm a somebody. But I'm somebody from Meg Evans College. And Meg Evans College is one of the places that you could come here any level you are, wanting to do anything that you want to do. It is possible. Am I right, Cedar? Right? I'm right, right? You come, you walk these halls, there's someone to help you, right? And not help you do what they want you to do. There's someone to help you do what you want to do, right? And you, there's also someone here to who's walked your path, right? Because before today, I know we all share the same story. I've been hungry. I know, I know the trick. When you see an event here and you see food, only thing I want to be okay. So what are you talking about today? <laughs> <laughs> um, the professors at Medgar College, um, many of them went to Medgar, many of them didn't go to Medgar, but they understand the culture of Medgar Evers. Is that if you don't, we're we going to kick down the door. We go, if we get your telephone number, we call you any hour. Professor, hi. Hi, this assignment that you gave. Hey, Professor, I don't see that any other college. Right. I don't see that I can pick up the phone and call my professor any hour of the night. I don't see professors that I can text. I've met governors you can do that. I've had a class with Professor Bullard and he helped me pursue that uh, embalming. You know, my our class project in the last day, he said of, of computer information, uh, computer science, we had to do a code. And he gave us this long list of you could do this project. You could build a game. You could build a lottery. You could do this, and I said, I don't, I don't want to do that, Professor. I, I, I want to, I want to build a a, 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 a code for my embalming or for restorative. Which one can I do? Because I, I don't want to do this right here. But that doesn't help me. He said, What are you talking about, Miss Philip? He said, Every class, every class, you have a new class to teach. Mm -hmm. He said, You know what? Work on your project. I, and I didn't know what to do. I wanted to do it. I didn't know what to do. But he held my hand. He said, okay, I think this is going to, he said, I think I got to add this to my resume now too, because. <laughs> but that's what I get. Mega Evers is the author. That's what I'm going to call Mega Evers. Mega Evers is the author. We cool good, but we the author. Mega Evers offers you the ability to see yourself, be yourself, and drive yourself. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> and that's dean role, right? This is our dean of business administration. So yeah, it's time for us to finish up. Does anyone else have any other questions? I can't quite see everyone in Zoom land, but if there's someone out there that maybe want to ask a question or leave a comment, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Unmute yourself. Yeah. No. There's still of you there. Okay, well, I'll ask you. Yeah, by all means, that's a question. You know, I asked you a question earlier. Your eyes are on me. Oh my God, it's a trick question. <laughs> oh, shoot. I can answer if I were a genie about what you asked. But that's before I heard all that stuff. So you were amazing, actually. To, to, uh, you've taken everything that was every no, every challenge, and for things that bring people to their, to their knees, you've turned into fear. So good on you. You lack no self esteem, which is really one of our biggest problems as women. Mm -hmm. um, the men, because we, we need approval, uh, we were taught to be good girls. And I don't care if it's a Muslim culture or a Christian or whatever, it's bullshit. It's excuse my French, <laughs> it's everywhere, it's the same. You know, people forget that even in England, it wasn't that long ago where women were able to vote and were no longer the property of their husbands. Yes. But my question to you, as you're being interviewed with the big fours, and and you know, I've been in some of these, but uh, for, for an ambitious girl like you, uh, are you sure that's what you want? What do you define success as? Because that's what drives you, said. It is. Um, I think defining success for me at this three point, sentences. recent, huh? In three sentences. <laughs> you told me already. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'm in your life now. Really. Yeah, so we, we, yeah, you, we, we are together forever us. now. Um, what defines success for me? Using what I have the best way that I can 
with being truthful to myself and my loved ones. That's it. Mm. That's success for me. Mm. I have my brain. I have my talents. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use them. I'm going to see where it takes me. I'm going to remain truthful to myself. Any employer I have, I'm going to bring myself to the job, right? And I'm going to do the best that I can. You see yourself as an employee. I see, uh, yes, I do see myself as an employee, but as Anushka said, she said, the path that you take in the beginning, that you forecast, is not the path that you may hold forever, right? Mm -hmm. So yes, I do see myself as an employee because I always see myself as a work in progress. I have a lot to learn and I accept that. And um, I am in this space where I love mentorship, right? And I welcome mentorship. So I do see myself as an employee. Do I see myself rest in peace to employee of? No, I do not. It's where we place emphasis on how we measure value. But, you know, you talked, you mentioned your, the North Star. So I uh, I think you'll do amazing. And I think you'll continue to inspire a lot of people. And don't forget your own North Star because I don't think it's the money that she brought up a few times. No, the, the, the money is a means to an end. Um, You're right. The money. The money doesn't drive me so much as the competition. I think that the more people That's said no to me, is the more I say, you can't tell me, you know, because I was spoiled. I, you know, I was a daddy's girl. And all my friends know that, that to get the best results from me, you have to spoil me. You know? Well, you that, yeah, I, I have to spoil. So um, it's not the money that drives me. Um, what drives me is the kicking down of the doors. Yeah. Right? I yeah. feel like... You love the challenge. I love the challenge of being purposeful. Right. I feel that I have a right to be here. I have a right to be heard. Exactly. And I feel that a lot of people in the world, when they're not heard and they don't know where their place is, that's where we have a lot of problems. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not the money that drives me. It's just the competitive edge. I want to show these guys that I can have three children, one in the freezer on the way. And <laughs> that I got here. <laughs> And still be, still be, of course, the parent adopting, adopting, um, not only adopting children with special needs. I don't adopt normal children. Special people adopting children with special needs. Still be a wife, right? Still look fantastic and cook my own meals and still be in tech, right? I'll still be doing what I need to do, being who I am. What about you, Ursula? What? Um, <laughs> I I think that um being true to yourself and the values is really key. I think also, you know, I'm I'm in my fifties now, so I've been in the, had my career going for quite some time. And you 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 too, right? You've been uh, sixteen for a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> but um, so I think that you're living your values is really yeah. key as well. And and sometimes things don't feel right, and that's really important to keep that north star and yeah. um and you know where you can have an impact. You know, that's what really gets me motivated and how can you help people and tech is a great tool for for us to to do that through so it is mm -hmm. yeah and i've been in tech for 36 years innovation emerging tech nice yeah and you'll tell us what i'm and it's 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 wonderful to see girls like you in in, in the industry and it's sad that we're still talking about it. Mm, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really sad. But but you 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 said something about we're, we're all here and then we're all and you're I told you in this my team and that's what we need. We we've not because we've been brought up to compete for the man and for everything. So we've not been as there for but again, Hermina. Thank you. I I think my next award is to we can stand for each other and. Um, yeah. I call it the lean back. You know, we have each other's back and we compete to complete each other mm -hmm. and pick yeah. someone. Definitely, um, Hamima and 
the Aspire Foundation organizing this platform is a reality check for us to know that, you know, coming together is really what the essential part of women in tech is, um, because that does drive us. Because we really don't see each other, even when in the workplace, you really see, you don't see all the women who work in tech talk coming together in one building. You don't see that even. So this, this platform is unique. You know, today is unique um, for us to be able to collab and really give it, you know, to give the guys a good, a good look. Look how many of us. There's more than one. <laughs> There's more than one in the room. So yeah, this is this is what it takes because the office environment, you know, they don't forget that you're a woman. Mm -hmm. Whether you're in tech or anything, they don't forget that you're a woman. And mm -hmm. a lot of times, even sometimes, I don't know if you, you face this, um, Ursula, where some of our colleagues in tech really do use our barrier or, or our motivators against us for hiring. You know, so they'll say, oh, you know, she's she's a female, you know, they interview us and they are also in tech and they want you the same thing. And they're like, don't know what the company wants. You know, the company is looking for something different and they forget that they went through the same hiring process and had to prove themselves the same way. How, how do you uh, find that matching up today still, 30 something years in? <laughs> well, I think being different is an advantage, right? Like yeah. it's something that you can, you know, feel, own that and recognize that you have a unique contribution to bring mm -hmm. and and just make that contribution. Yeah. I think if everyone is just the same, we won't get as far. Yeah. And and the world is changing so much that so we need new and different approaches. So different is better. <laughs> and having a powerful bio, you know, you have to let your bio stand for you. You know, I, I, while I say woman in tech, I'm not saying sympathize with woman in tech. I'm saying woman in tech, you need to step your game up. You know, you need to, you know, if you have a profile on the internet, you need to show what you can do. You need to get involved, you know, uh, my college students, like I tell them all the time, get involved, get into student government, get into male development, get into tutoring, get into mentorship, get into what you want. You know, you want people to offer to you, you have to offer also. You know, there's high school students, there's uh, elementary school students, there's a lot of people getting into tech. So you may not be getting it from yourself, but if you know what you want, you know, you need mentorship, you need people to offer you uh, scholarships. You need all this stuff. You could do these things for women in tech. There's a lot of foundations out there. It's a lot of people pushing initiatives, but you yourself could push your own initiatives, you know? Mm -hmm. Small things, right? I'll give you an example. You're all college students. You probably have at least five or $10. You can mentor someone with five to $10, you know? What do they want? Maybe a lip gloss, maybe a pack of sanitary napkins. Maybe they just want the ability to have $5 to go to the beauty supply store. Right. That's a mentorship also, because you get you use that tool to get them to listen to you and then you get to advise them on the right path. You can put that on your resume. Everything is resume worthy. You are now a mentor. You are a facilitator. You know, you, that's all thing. Women now you could if you're able to use your talents at this level, you can become an LLC. Right. And you can push your, yourself as your company. You know, I, I started this with my daughter. She's about to be a nursing student. And that's what it's going to be. She's going to be her own LLC. You get paid differently, right? And you get to push your own initiative. So you could start being your own foundation, pushing your initiatives, offering what you want people to offer you at this level to any level, lower or upper. You know, right? for Ursula for like this really amazing uh conversation I'm looking forward to reading your book yeah <laughs> right whether it's poetry your biography whatever it is I already so <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so very much for taking the time and um yeah you Thank you so much, Risa. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and before we close, we have um, I really want to thank Meg Edwards for offering us the space. And while we're here, like we have the Miss uh, Z, you know, no, Raquel, please. Raquel, yes, Raquel, the hostess is the hostess. Thank you, and Dean Rowe, thank you for having me here. I appreciate yeah. you. Thank you yeah. all for coming out. Thank you, everyone who's online. Yeah. Thank you for everyone who's in person. We really appreciate you sharing with us this evening as we discuss, as we discuss theme. And you got to hear from one of our, our top students here, Nasia Phillips, who is a senior here in the Computer Information Systems 
program. We really appreciate you coming out. We can't do what we do without the wonderful students like Messiah Phillips. Yeah. I so appreciate her coming out. And we even have one of our alums, Summer, who was a CIS major. We have we appreciate you coming out too, Summer. And again, thank you. And have a wonderful evening and look out for any future in, engagements that we have. Thank you again for your support. Thank you all. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>